On July 2nd, around 9.30 a.m., Sidney Tierhuis walked through the visitor's entrance into the Winnipeg Remand Center. There were two male guards at the front desk, and when Sidney got to the desk, one of the guards asked, Can I help you, sir? Sidney replied, I want to report, I think, a murder. The guard quickly replied, Don't say another word. He then picked up the phone and called the public safety building and explained to an operator, there is a person here at the remand center who wants to report a crime. And then he handed the phone to Sydney. He said to the operator, when I woke up this morning, I went to the washroom and there was a dead body in the bathtub. The operator asked where he was living and he said, the Royal Albert Arms Hotel, room 309. The operator indicated that police officers were on their way. They asked Sydney to explain his story and Sydney told him that he had met the victim they had gone to his room for drinks and consensual sex, and eventually he had passed out intoxicated. When he awoke, he went to the washroom, and in the bathtub was the dead body. No more details were given to the officers, and the three of them proceeded to the Royal Albert Arms Hotel in Sydney's room. The two officers in Sydney went through the front entrance, past the now quiet bar to the elevator, and up to the third floor. The halls were quite narrow and the floors uneven. The room doors sloppily painted off-white. The male officer asked Sydney for the key to the room and Sydney handed it to him. The cleaning lady was down the hall, cleaning another tenant's suite. The male officer opened the hotel room door and walked in and the female officer stayed out in the hallway with Sydney. Inside the room was well lit because of the sunlight streaming through the window. There was no need for the officer to turn on the room light. He called out to the female officer and said, There's some blood on the mattress. He continued looking about the room and proceeded to the washroom. The light shone in from the washroom window and when he pushed open the door, he froze. In the antique clawfoot bathtub was a huge man with long dark hair, his height about six foot four and weighing around 250 pounds. He was lying naked on his back in the bathtub. His body had been chopped into eight separate pieces. He had been decapitated. Both arms had been severed at the elbows, the legs at the knees. He had been sawn completely in half. The penis and the testicles were together, cut cleanly from the body. He had been disemboweled. The chest and neck had 47 stab wounds. The chest cavity had been sliced open and the heart, lungs, liver, intestines, all of the victim's internal organs were gone. The officer stood there for two or three minutes transfixed, unable to move or say anything. He finally stumbled out of the washroom and into the hallway. He tried his best to compose himself and coolly told his partner, cuff him, and she did. The male officer locked the door and the three of them walked slowly down the stairs and outside to the police car. The female officer placed Sydney in the back seat and then she asked her partner, are you okay? Shaking, he wiped the tears from his face and replied, No, I'm not. Not after seeing something like that. They sat in the police car and the coroner's van pulled up. Three Crown Victorias showed up shortly after the coroner arrived and all the detectives, the coroner and the two police officers entered the hotel and went to room 309. The crowd had started to gather outside the hotel. Soon after, A Channel News showed up. Not long after, the other television news organizations began to arrive, and along with them came the many curious onlookers. Someone was heard asking if the scene was being filmed as part of a movie. Sidney Tierhuis sat handcuffed in the back seat of the police car, taking in the whole scene. The two officers appeared from the hotel and returned to the cruiser. The three of them then proceeded in silence to the public safety building. I was in Thunder Bay for July 1st. When I arrived back in Winnipeg on July 4th, I saw the Winnipeg Sun newspaper with the headline, Victim Cut in Pieces, Stolen Film Jewelry and Bizarre Tale of Murder. The following day saw the murder dismemberment story make the front pages, and then on July 12th, Sidney Trujillo made again the front page with his smiling face in the headline, I am not a monster. And inside on page three with the headline, Royal Albert Hell, Accused killer has no recall of grisly events. 
I read the story about the gruesome killing and the statements made by Tierhus saying that he had passed out and had no memory of the killing. I cut the articles from the newspapers and put them with the other related clippings that I had been saving. This case was of particular interest to me. I had been producing and hosting a talk radio program called Off the Cuff on the University of Manitoba radio station CJUM for almost three and a half years and I had worked as chairman of media and policy affairs for a Winnipeg-based law reform group called People for Justice. I was a vocal critic of the Canadian judicial system and I felt this case was a perfect example of a trial that would deal with the very kinds of issues that I had been able to examine on my radio program and with my work with People for Justice. Based on the fact that Sidney claimed to not recall anything whatsoever of the killing due to intoxication, I believed that the prosecution would not be able to successfully convict Tierhus of murder. They would have to settle for a manslaughter conviction. Because both alcohol and drugs could probably be proven to be involved in the crime, coupled with the fact that there were no eyewitnesses to the killing, I felt that the story Sidney had put forth about the killing would be the only story ever told. Right from the first time I read about Sidney in this case, it seemed absolutely absurd that anyone would accept that a person could do such an incredible act and not be cognizant of their actions. <laughs> 